and gentlemen, please welcome this most exciting writer that we have with us this evening, the wonderful Sarah Baum, who's just won Sunday Independent Newcomer of the Year. Sarah, you've won this award for your novel, Spill, Simmer, Falter, Wither. And this story that you've written about, this story of this vulnerable man, Ray, and his, his dog, One Eye, why do you think it has enthralled, really, critics and readers alike so much? <laughs> that absolutely baffles me. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, when I sent the book out to publishers, I was not ambitious at all. I thought, this is just a weird little book. No one will like it. And the same thing, I'm confounded by how how many readers that I never expected would read this type of book um, have have read it and and told me how much it affected them. Um, I didn't give the reading public enough credit as I should have done, and I was wrong. So um, that's here we are with an award to prove it. You were wrong. A big weird flame thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you think it's so weird, I'll take it from you. <laughs> I don't want to take it home on the train. <laughs> You have to buy an extra seed for it, I think. Yeah. Sarah, I know you've talked before about finding the voice in this book, and it is the story of a man and a dog. Talk to me a little bit about the struggle initially and finding the voice about how you would tell this story. Yeah, well, I said in my speech um, that it was an ironic award because I spent the years that I was writing it, and still I live in a house without central heating. So, <laughs> um, Bored gosh. Bored gosh. <laughs> but, yeah. Could I cash it in for, like, a year's free heat? Um, so, yeah, um, I mean, I went through hard times writing it and um, it came from my own dog, but I wanted the character to be an extreme of my own situation, my own isolation and loneliness, I suppose. Um, and I thought that a character, um, in her, a, a young woman in her, in her 20s, 30s now, um, wouldn't quite carry that in the way that an old man who'd never really communicated with the world in, every way, in any way would. Um, so yes, that was how the character came about. The voice was, the voice came about when I realized that the man was speaking to the dog, that everything was addressed to him, probably because I was speaking to my own dog <laughs> as opposed to humans. Um, so that was how it came about. Um, talk to me about the title, because there's been a lot of talk about this title. It's a wonderful title. But talk to us a little bit about the inspiration and what you think it means. Uh, well, the. The, the title is The Seasons, Spill is for Spring, Simmer is for Summer, Falter is for Autumn, Withers for Winter. Um, and that was my way of structuring the novel. And I wanted to write it, the first draft was written throughout those seasons. Um, description is important to me, probably the most important thing, so I wanted to be able to look out the window and see, see the, the birds change their plumage, the, the flowers and weeds bloom and die, and with the first draft I could do that and wrote it section by section, season by season, and then I guess it was easy to, to give the title. It's been so hard in translation, though, because <laughs> the first thing every translator says to me is, do you have an alternative title? Because this doesn't work in any other language. <laughs> and you're like, no. <laughs> now, the language in the book, and lots of people have written about this, it's, you know, it's exciting, it's fresh. Did it just emerge in your writing, Sarah, or were you working on draft after draft to try and get that from your writing? Um, no, I wrote it in fragments, in fragments, and then eventually I, I pushed them together. Um, but the voice was, uh, the voice was really, um, the fact that I, I, I was insecure about writing a very Irish voice because I grew up with English parents, even though I grew up in Ireland. So, um, so I was trying not to, not to have it sound too much like me, but then at the same time to have it, um, not sound like someone who was, who was too Irish in an, in an Irish kind of way. I don't know. You just write what you know and then it comes out however it comes out. Excellent. Now, you're beginning to manage an international career. You've had such success and praise over the last year. But how is that working out in terms of your, lear your learning, your writing, your own creativity? Where are you at right now? <laughs> I'm actually just back from three months in the US, um, which was weird. It's so nice to be back in Europe. <laughs> They're another species, the Americans. But it was incredibly interesting. <laughs> Um, it was an international program, so I spent a lot of time with people from lots of different countries, and I think that that's made an impact that hasn't settled yet. Um, I came home and I just desperately wanted to get away from everything, and so we've just put down a deposit on a house like in the crap hole of nowhere in West Cork, and we're moving in the new year, and I don't even know if there's internet coverage, so that's, that's where I am. With... 
<laughs> well, it means you'll get writing done if there's no Yes, coverage. exactly. <laughs> now, the attention you've received for this first novel, as you said, you didn't even know if it would be published, but it must be so encouraging. I mean, we have to remind people you've won the Rooney Prize, was long listed for The Guardian first. You've now been shortlisted for the Costa First Novel Award. It must make your head spin. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. The, the literary awards really mean a lot to me. Um, uh, the Guardian and the Costa, which is a shortlist, which is wonderful. Um, I mean, the book itself hasn't actually won anything yet. You know, the, the Rooney was for a, a writer. This award tonight was for a writer. So I'd love to see the book win something. Well, I'm sure we'll be seeing you here again in our green room in years to come. But for tonight, Sarah Bam, huge congratulations. Wonderful achievement. Thank you.